sponsored in part by dollarseed.com for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs, all organic seeds, all only a dollar a pack. dollarseed.com and by willowspringssoap.com, handmade soaps with simple recognizable ingredients, making soaps using the cold kettle process while using traditional methods. willowspringssoap.com Winchester Gardens with their line of new 100% all organic fertilizer for the home gardener. Visit Winchester Gardens at wgardens.com for a store near you. We're going to preserve some of the fall harvest by canning some pumpkins in our pressure canner. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. I'm Holly Baird. So having your own pumpkin is nice to have in a jar throughout the year. There's many things you can do with it. Um, you can make all sorts of different baked goods. You can make all sorts of savory dishes, soups, stews, all sorts of great stuff. So it's nice to have some canned pumpkin. And if you do it yourself, you're definitely going to save some money. And you know, if you just if you pick up the pumpkins or grow them yourself, you know where they come from. This is a Cinderella pumpkin that we grew. We grew it well with a self-watering container and it, it turned out pretty nice. So we're going to go ahead and preserve it. And then this is just a, another pumpkin that we actually got uh, from a neighbor. So if you don't have a pressure canner, you can certainly, you can puree your pumpkin. You can cook it down. You can actually bake it down and then you just scoop it up and then you put it in some uh, freezer safe containers, whether it be jars or bags or what have you, and you can freeze it um, and then you can use it later on down the road. But this way, if you can pressure can it, you can go ahead and it's shelf stable. So, you, and you wanna drain it before you use it. And when you do it in quarts, that's basically um, on average about the same as if you had a pint of just like regular pumpkin puree because you have to cube it up. So. Um, with the different, you know, with the extra space there. Once you drain it, it's basically the same volume as a can of, a pint can of pumpkin puree. So that you kind of know if you're making a recipe, how much you need. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get it chopped in half, get it peeled. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you wash your pumpkin off. If you have one of those, you know, sink scrubber brushes, you wanna scrub it off, get all that dirt and stuff off of there. Um, then you can cut it in half, which I'm gonna do here. And we already have our water boiling because you're gonna put it in hot boiling water for a couple minutes. So we've got that going just to save some time because once you get it into the can, it does take 90 minutes. So if you wanna do yourself a favor, save some time along the way, that's always a good idea. And we also have the jars in there in the other, in our pressure canner, just keeping warm so that they are nice and hot um, with the, so we're not putting hot stuff into cold jars. So, you're just going to take it in half like that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna scoop out the seeds. And you can cut this into quarters if that's easier for you. And actually, I think that's what I'm gonna do here. Whew. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the seeds scooped out. And then, and all this, you know, all this stringy stuff. Basically, like if you're gonna carve a pumpkin, you get that stuff scooped out. So for those of you that may not, may not know this, different types of pumpkins have different amounts of, you know, flesh or meat, whatever you want to call it. As you can see, the Cinderella pumpkin, it has thinner walls. And uh, if you look here, I mean, they're pretty thin in general. But this uh, smaller sugar pumpkin or even like a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, they typically have thicker walls. So we're actually going to, we, we didn't really know what was gonna happen when we cut this one open. So now we're gonna just go ahead and get both ready to process. And then whatever we decide not to can, we'll just go ahead and puree and freeze. What I do is if I have kind of like a potato, sometimes there's little imperfections. And so I just take, go ahead, take my peeler and I just kind of chop around it here. And it comes out real nice and easy that way. And then you don't have to worry about any of those little funny, I don't, I don't know what they are, maybe bruises or what have you. But anyway, so they're really easy to get out. And, you know, the, le the less stuff you have going into your jar that could cause problems, the better. So, there's, you know, maybe it's not necessary to do that, but I think it would help in the long run. So anyway, so the easiest way to cut this is to take it, cut it in half again. And then you can go ahead and cut it like this. And 
And if you cut it into, I don't know, what do you call these, moons, like this, then you can, it's easier to kind of dice it up. Okay, so what we're going to do with the seeds, and I don't, you can, you can roast them if you don't know. So you can soak them in some water, and then that should help separate them, and then you can go ahead and, and roast them in the oven. It's a pretty nice snack if you like them. Um, so then you just dice this up into about one inch cubes or so. And then we're going to get that done here. And we have two different peelers. This peeler kind of works the best for peeling larger things. So that's what I would pr uh, recommend is getting one of those. I don't really know what, you, what kind of peeler you call it. But if you're going to do a lot of peeling for large items, it definitely makes a difference. Once we get this all cut up, we're going to go ahead and put them into the boiling water for two minutes. And that just starts the cooking process. Then we're going to put them into our hot sterilized jars and they're going to get pressure canned for 90 minutes. A pressure canner is definitely an important tool to have if you're going to be doing a lot of canning, especially low acid food canning, because it's the only way you can can it. Um, you can find all sorts of different types of pressure canners. If you do buy a pressure canner from online or a used one from a rummage sale or something like that, you want to get it checked with your local extension, and we'll have a note in our we'll have a link in our show notes as to how to find that. Pressure canners all kind of vary. This one has a weight. Some of them have a dial and a weight. We did get this one checked on. They said it was fine to use. And you want to get them checked year after year because they have, you know, these seals and all sorts of stuff. And just make sure that it is up to par. And it's just better be safe than sorry. Um, this one did not come with a rack. So we just took some old canning rings and we just tied them together with some wire that we had. And now we have a rack for it. And they're pretty basic. You just put the lid on, turn it, seals it, and then you just read your instructions. And make sure that you don't, when you get your pressure canner, that you don't throw your instructions away because you're going to have to use that time after time, especially maybe if you only can in the fall or something, you might not remember from year to year. So, so we've boiled them for two minutes. And what we're going to do is we've got them, we've got a couple filled up. We're just going to get these other two filled up. And you give, you leave one inch headspace. So one full inch of headspace is what you want to leave. So when you load them in there, you don't want to like smash them down or anything. You just want to leave them as cubes because you need that space. That's why you can't can uh, pumpkin puree because it's too viscous. So what you want to do is then you want to backfill it with water. It's pretty simple. Just take the hot water and you can use the same water that you're cooking them in, that's no problem. So with this particular canner, what we do is we get on the stove and put it on to high temperature. And with, with our canner and yours may be different, we, what we do is we let this steam, once it starts to steam, we let it steam continually for 10 minutes. We get our weight on there, we just screw it on there. Then we set our timer for 90 minutes. Then after 90 minutes, we turn our heat off and it's going to bring the pressure down. If you have a gauge, you can watch it go down to zero. With this one, we just check it after a little while by moving the weight. If it's still kind of making a noise, letting the steam up, then we know the pressure is not done being, you know, being taken down. Um, and it's just a good way to check it. So you want to definitely make sure you read your owner's manual on how your pressure canner works. So in 90 minutes, we'll have some fresh canned pumpkin that's good for a year on the shelf. For more organic gardening, visit the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com.